In this video, we'll set up Ubuntu for use with the Raspberry Pi 5 to a micro SD card from beginning to end. We'll start with installing Raspberry Pi Imager. We'll then configure the operating system and quickly go through several of its features. There are chapter markers below so that you can skip over what you may already know. I'm John and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Before we begin installing Ubuntu to a micro SD card, if you need a video that demonstrates the basics of the Pi 5 and how to set it up with Raspberry Pi desktop, you may want to pause this video and check out the video at the link above. Then of course, come back to this one. If your Pi is already assembled, we'll continue. In addition to the Pi 5 with a power supply, you'll also want a keyboard and a mouse. You can use any that you prefer or have available. You're also going to need a new micro SD card, such as this 128 gigabyte card from Team Group. You may also need a micro SD or SD card reader, such as this one from Beagle. I like this one because it has both USB type A and USB type C ports. So you can use it with a Pi, a PC, or even many cell phones. I'll place a link to the card and the USB stick in the description below if you need them. Keep in mind you can use any brand or capacity micro SD card that you prefer, or even a USB stick, an SSD with an adapter, but we'll keep it simple and just use this new card for setting up Ubuntu. Next, simply insert the micro SD card into the reader and connect it to your computer or Raspberry Pi. The software we'll use to write the Pi OS desktop image to our micro SD card is called Raspberry Pi Imager, and it's a free download. Simply open a browser on your computer and visit raspberrypi.com forward slash software. Scroll down a little ways and you'll find download links for the various operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu x86, and for the Raspberry Pi itself. Select the link for your computer and simply follow the prompts to install Pi Imager to your computer. In the getting started video I mentioned at the beginning, we used a PC to run Pi Imager. In this one, we'll use the Pi itself, and I'll show you how to install it to the Raspberry Pi desktop. To start, you can find links on the Raspberry Pi 5 guide on my website to Pi Imager, or directly visit raspberrypi.com forward slash software. Then, copy the command to install Pi Imager to the clipboard. Open a terminal session. Paste the command into the terminal, which is sudo apt install rpi-imager. Press enter, and pi-imager will then be installed. To quit the terminal, you can close the window or type exit and press enter. Next, we'll write Ubuntu to the microSD card. Whether you're running pi-imager from a PC, Mac, or the pi itself as we are here, all of the following steps for using Pi Imager will be identical. Plug in the USB stick or other drive you want to use with Ubuntu. I recommend removing any other USB drives during this step so there is no chance of overriding the wrong drive. In my case, I'll be writing to the micro SD card using the Beagle USB adapter that we saw earlier. If you see a pop-up dialog when inserting the card, you can just close or cancel it. To start Pi Imager, click the Raspberry icon then Accessories, and the Imager icon. Once Pi Imager starts up, under the Raspberry Pi device heading, click the Choose Device button and select Raspberry Pi 5 from the list. Under the Operating System heading, click the Choose OS button, then navigate down until you see Other General Purpose OS, then select Ubuntu. There are two options here. The one we want for this demonstration is Ubuntu Desktop 64-bit. Keep in mind, the version is sure to change in the future. The selection at the bottom is for Ubuntu Server. We'll stick with the desktop version. Under Storage, select Choose Storage, then select the device you want to write to. In our case, we'll write to the 128GB USB stick. Now, click the Next button. You'll then see a warning informing you that the data will be erased. If you're sure you've selected the correct device, click the Yes button. 
If you're prompted for a password, enter the password for the user account used when setting up your Raspberry Pi 5, then click the Authenticate button. If using Windows or a Mac, you may not be prompted. Raspberry Pi Imager will then begin downloading the Ubuntu image and writing to your storage device. This process will take some time, so I'll go ahead and skip forward. Once complete, click the Continue button and close out of Pi Imager. If you're on a PC or Mac, safely eject the micro SD card at this point. Since we're on a Pi 5 here, click the Raspberry icon, select Logout, and then the Shutdown option. You can also press the power button twice on the front of the Pi 5 to shut it down if you prefer. I'll remove the micro SD with Pi Desktop, and I really like this memory card holder. You can use it to keep your cards organized. Minus the bad handwriting, you can easily just write in what you have on the card. It's really handy. Again, links below if you're interested. Now I'll take the micro SD that we just imaged with Ubuntu and insert it into the Pi 5 and power it on. We'll boot into Ubuntu and set it up. When Ubuntu first boots, select your preferred language and click Continue. Now select the keyboard layout and again, click Continue. If you'll be using a Wi-Fi connection, select Connect to this network, followed by your Wi-Fi network name or SSID from the list, and click the Connect button. You'll then be prompted to enter your Wi-Fi password, enter it, and click Connect. Then, click the Continue button. Here, we'll select our time zone. I'm US Central, so I'll select Chicago and click Continue. You'll next need to create a local account. Enter your name, and you can change the computer name if you want. Then enter your password twice. If you don't want to be prompted to log in each time you boot into Ubuntu, you can select the option to log in automatically. Once you've made your selections, click Continue. The System Configuration Wizard will then apply all the changes you've made and the UI will restart. From here, you can connect to any existing accounts if you want. I don't, so I'll go ahead and click Skip in the upper right. If you want to provide additional information to Ubuntu, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and select No, Don't Send Info, at least for now, and I'll click Next. If you want applications to be able to use the location services, you can enable this option. I'll leave it off and click Next. At this point, Ubuntu is set up. However, if you don't mind sticking around for a few more minutes, there are some additional things I'd like to show you. Just click Done here to complete the wizard. On the left side of the screen, you'll find a toolbar with a number of popular applications such as Firefox, Thunderbird for email, files, and even LibreOffice is pre-installed, which is an excellent Office suite. We'll open LibreOffice Writer you can also select New, and then Spreadsheet, and now we have both applications available. If the application you want isn't already on the toolbar, you can right-click the icon and pin it. That is, when you exit the application, the icon will persist on the toolbar. In the lower left, click the multi-square icon to see all the applications that are installed. Here we see two pages of applications that you can also run. We'll try more of them out in a moment. After installing Ubuntu, it's a good idea to make sure it's up to date. To do that, click the Show Apps icon in the lower left, move to the second page, and you'll see an icon for Software Updater. Click that. A dialog will then appear, checking to see if there are any applications that are available to be updated. If there are, you can click the Details of Updates section to expand and see what applications can be updated. Looks like several updates are available, so we'll go ahead and install them. Just click the Install Now button. If prompted, enter your password for the account you created earlier, and followed by the Authenticate button. The updates will then be downloaded and installed. You may also be prompted at this point to restart to complete the update. Just click the Restart Now button to apply the updates and restart the Pi 5. If you want to easily change the display resolution, under Show Apps, select the Settings icon. 
Then select the Displays option on the left, choose the resolution that you want to use, and click the Apply button in the upper right. If everything looks correct, click the Keep Changes button and the new resolution will be applied. If you simply want to browse the internet, click the Firefox icon at the upper left, type in what you're looking for, you'll find browsing with Ubuntu is very responsive and the pages scroll smoothly. If you select the Files icon from the toolbar, you'll find an interface for managing files and folders on the system. There are some common subfolders such as Documents, Downloads, Music, Pictures, Videos, and more. To properly shut down the Pi, click the Power icon in the upper right. There are a number of options available here, but we'll click the gray Power icon. From here, you can select Restart or Power Off. We'll select Power Off followed by the Power Off button, and the Pi will shut down. If you physically press the Power button on the Pi 5, you will also see the Power Off dialog. However, you'll have to click the Power Off button as a second button press doesn't currently shut down the Pi. If you click this icon in the upper left, you can have multiple virtual desktops. For example, here I've started YouTube playing in one virtual desktop running at 720p. While video playback is good, there are a number of dropped frames with the Stats for Nerds turned on. If I click the icon again, I have three virtual desktops active, and you can easily move between each simply by selecting it. You can also easily find new applications to install from the App Center. You can search for a specific application or simply select one of the categories on the left. Select the application, click the Install button, and enter your password. The application will then be downloaded and installed. To locate the application, go to Show Apps, select the application, and you're good to go. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the Like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.